Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pitta Party, the podcast. Um, today we've got Ali and we also have a special guest, Cecilia Harvey, um, tech CEO. I guess that's the, the title we're going to give you. <laughs> Hi, Cecilia. <laughs> Good, thank you. Thank you for you. joining us. We really appreciate it. And we're so excited to have you to have a chat today. I'm excited. My goodness. I'm like, <laughs> thing, you know, like my, career, my crazy career journey. Because if you would have told me that I would be the CEO of a tech company or even in tech at all, um, I would have told you absolutely crazy. That's not going to be me. <laughs> Like, I'm going to go, I'm doing something else. I thought it was going to be like a solicitor or something. And oh, wow. Yeah, it was weird. But you know what? Looking back on it, I remember when I was little, I used to play um, chairman of the board with my Barbie dolls. And I was like addicted to my computer, like playing computer games. Um, oh. <laughs> you know, so maybe it was in the cards, you know, that the yeah. people would like follow this career path in technology. Uh, they do say whatever you, uh, whatever your interests are when you're very young, it ends up being true. what your, your true path should be. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Barbie helped mm. me manifest it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Barbie helped me manifest lots of boyfriends. That's what my boss said. <laughs> well, you do like sex, Ali, so... <laughs> But I guess people are going to be a bit confused, so because you obviously have an American accent, but I know that you're calling in from London. So um, to kind of let people know that me and Cecilia met a few weeks ago when we were in London, a mutual friend kind of set us up on a on a girly lunch and we had a, a big day that day. <laughs> and... From lunch to dinner to... <laughs> Potentially having a club night, yeah. <laughs> it happens yeah, with it was <laughs> it, was, it was Cecilia was the bad influence on oh, me that right. day. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, I was like, I'm going home. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I know. <laughs> I know. I was... <laughs> I had the gym the next day, so thank God. And I had a facial, so thank God that was what kept me in check. But um, no, it was a fun day. And yeah, I guess Cecilia kind of, I got to, you know, hear about yeah, Cecilia's story and how she got to London and into tech. And yeah, it's it's amazing. It's an incredibly, you know, it is inspiring. It's, you know, even me, I was like, wow, I'm sitting with this woman who's like, a CEO of a tech company. I don't know anyone who works in tech. So. <laughs> Most people don't. Or like... <laughs> but, um... Well, I guess unless you're like in, you know, working in the industry or have an interest or, you know, down in Silicon Valley or, you know, wherever it's, it's definitely something um, out of mine and Ali's world. And mm. yeah, I'd love for you to kind of share your story and how you got to London and into tech. And yeah. And like, even just, um, you know, in general, like how people always say, oh, you know, yeah, I don't really know much about tech, but so the reality is te the technology impacts all of our lives. Like even you guys, in terms of what you do, tech is still like a big part of your job, engineering and what happens with the, you know, the boats and everything like that. Like it's massive. Mm -hmm. um, so, but how I started it, like I said, like if you would have told me that I would grow up to have a career in tech, I would tell you you're absolutely crazy. Um, so originally, I'm, yeah, I'm from New York originally, and um, I kind of grew up in this sort of my Wonder Woman background, I call it, where I grew up in this house with my my mother, my grandmother, my grandmother's older sister, and my two aunts. And I was like the baby. I'm still the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so then from an early age, you know, all I saw was really women supporting other women, and. Um, and just, you know, women really doing it for themselves and, you know, being out there and, and being independent. And, um, and that's really what I think was definitely part of like my, my foundation and my background and everything. So from there, you know, I went on to, to university and I remember, I will never forget, it was my first year at university. I went to Wellesley in Massachusetts and um, Wellesley had this trip called the Wall Street trip. 
And it was mainly for people who were in their last year of university where you would go and you would visit um, different banks. And there were all of these um, alumna who had graduated from Wellesley who were now working at these banks and they gave me these great career talks. And I was a first year and I thought, well, I can't go on this trip. And I remember one of my friends to this, still my friends to this day, she was a senior, her name's Tanya. And Tanya said, come on, what do you have to lose? And so I was like, okay. So I think I was probably the only first year on this trip. Everybody's probably looking at me like, what is she doing here? We're all trying to get jobs. And so then, and I joined the <laughs> trip and that was the first time that I had ever really visited a trading floor, um, really seen what investment banking was like. Um, and and got to visit we went to jp morgan goldman sachs and um and merrill lynch and i remember being so fast i remember i saw a trading floor and like all of these lights flashing and people talking this energy and everything and i thought i don't know what these people are doing but it is giving me my life and this is what i want to do <laughs> one day that's so cool. It was crazy. And then I re also cool. remember meeting, um, at that time, there was Salamna, and she was this, like, tall, like, beautiful black woman and went to my school, similar backgrounds, everything. And I thought, oh, my God, I want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like her. And so then, and, you know, I think that's also the importance of when you, when you see somebody that, that looks like you and is doing something that you want to do and it, it's just like, wow, like this is also something that's possible for me. Like when you see it, you can actually believe like, wow, I can do this. So, yeah, it's in your reach. It's in your reach. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, and for the next four years, I did everything I could from internships to uh, to meetings I could have with people that worked in the industry to get more information on it. If it was stuffing envelopes at a financial oh. services firm, I did it. I just didn't care. Uh, I was going to do whatever it took so that yeah, when I graduated, I would be working on Wall Street. And so that's how my career really kicked off by a, a trip that I probably that's shouldn't fair. have been on, but I just took a chance on <laughs> it's interesting because it kind of show, you know you go on these school trips and um, whether they be like an international one or you know from primary school to the zoo or whatever it is and I never actually thought people actually changed their career right in these school trips and now I'm like oh they're obviously really important because <laughs> they <laughs> expecting that I know it's like an experience <laughs> I saw lights flashing on a trading floor and you know this amazing woman I was like oh my god I want to be like you <laughs> Well, I could, ima I could imagine the energy is pretty um, amazing to be on a trading floor. I, I could, I could. It would be very cool. Yeah, I could imagine it for sure. You know, I love, I think, any sort of, anything that's sort of fast paced and, and something where I felt like I was constantly learning and I was around dynamic people. I mean, that could be any industry, you know, that energy, that buzz where you feel like you're never going to get bored. Um, that's what really appealed to me. And that's really on the trading floor is where I fell in love with tech. So because those types of businesses, they rely so heavily on technology. And that's where I really learned that. And so then I would be spending time with the technology team to understand, okay, what projects are we working on to help build out our platform so that we can do things faster, so that we can, you know, be more productive. Um, and that's where I fell in love with the technology. And I was like, wow, I really want to continue to, to do more of this. And, and that's really where it started. But, but it, it's these things where it's something that's totally unexpected. But I think as long as you open yourself up to different possibilities and just different opportunities, you, you never know where life is going to take you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And how long were you in banking for before you went into, into tech? Uh, well, it sort of all meshed throughout the years because even though I was in banking, I was still working in technology. So I moved on to do more of working at management consultancies and doing more projects working with banks to help them build out their training platforms, to help them grow globally, um, leading tech teams, managing tech as a business, really. So although, so it's cool because it's kind of like I got the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, you need, I mean, no matter what industry it is, I guess you need that, um, you need someone in that banking and business mind. Yeah. 
and you just kind of found your niche in tech, I guess, but you bring that business side um, and those numbers. I mean, I'm talking about like, I know nothing about no. this world. So I'm like, <laughs> what I understand of it. You know what? I think it's about no matter what you do, it's about finding alignment with who you are as a person and your authentic self. You know, early on in our careers, I think all of us were just trying to figure out who we are and, and what we're into, what we're not into. And that can really change over the years. You know, a, a perfect example is when I was, you know, I'm sort of in banking. So then you rise through the ranks and everything like that. You're in these corporate institutions. And at one point in time, my definition of success was, yeah, you continue to grow and you, know, you get a higher title and you get more money and stuff like that. And then you get older and then you get more, you live a bit more, you get more experience. You're sort of what is important to you can, can shift. And that's what happened to me. And success was no longer about, you know, how much money you're making or what your title is. Success was about, is this something that I find fulfilling? Am I doing something where I feel like it's a purpose? Am I feeling something where I feel like I'm making a contribution? Am I doing something where it excites me to wake up? Do I love the people in the environment that I'm surrounding myself with? And it got to a point where the answer was no. And I remember I, I had a role where everybody thought this was like the dream job. Like I had reached, I was done. It was just like, okay, thing. Um, and I absolutely hated going into work every single day. I felt like I was on oh, wow. a hamster wheel uh, that I just, that you're just on and you're running, running, running. And you, on the outside, you know, everything looks so perfect. And, you know, that's like a, a dream job, you know, that that's incredible. But if you're doing something that doesn't align to who you are, your spirit, what, what you are about, what you find of value at that point, you know, it, it's unfulfilling. And, and that's tough to, yeah. for anybody, I think, to get to a point in your career, in your life, where you're not in alignment with what you truly want to do and who you are as a person at that point. So many of us. Yeah. Have. And yeah. I think it's hard as well, in my experience, and, you know, po probably yours as well, is pinpointing pinpointing what makes you unhappy. Yeah. Like, I find there's been times in my life where, but I can't work it out. And I think, and you're scared to leave your job because you're like, what if it isn't my job? What if it's something else? Yeah. So I always um, think that's incredibly brave and, you know, courageous to be, to be able to hone down in what the problem is and to really you know, trust your instinct and say, you know, okay, I, th I think it's my job. I'm going to change it and see if it brings me, you know, more joy or more satisfaction. Um, and, you know, nine times out of 10, you know, it probably is what you're, you change in your life that is making you unhappy. But I always think it's so brave because I know that I've had times where I've been in a job and I'm like, I'm, I'm unhappy. I'm pretty sure it's my job, but, you know, maybe it's not my job. Maybe it's something else. Like, and now I'm going to quit this really well paid, you know, amazing job. And then I might be unhappy still, but you're not, you're going to. So high risk. Yeah, it is a high risk. So I think, you know, and especially if, if you've got the pressure of your peers and your family being like, you have this amazing job. And I do, I think it makes you go home at night being like, what's wrong with me? Why am I happy? Mm -hmm. um, I'm scared to, to change your direction. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, we were driven by you know, the opinions of the people around us. So I always think that's, yeah, super, super brave um, yeah, no. to do mm. that. So, I, and, you know, I, so many people would be able to relate to that yeah. feeling as well. So many people, mm -hmm. everyone's probably gone through a process, even the ones that have found, you know, like you, Cecilia, the ones that have found their place, like their fulfillment. And I feel the same about my job. And Daisy, I'm not sure if you feel the same, um, but even that, it takes, it takes that, that journey to get to that point. And yeah, we've all been there where you've stuck in something and going, what am I doing here? And your, and your wants change as well. Like what makes you happy? Like you said, for a really long time, you know, in 10 years, something else might make you happy and to realize that yeah. and, and, you know, to go to bed at night and reflect and, or, you know, go for a swim or whatever you do and take that time to reflect and go, oh, what I thought used, you know, what used to make me happy 10 years ago or last year, now all of a sudden doesn't make me happy. And yeah, it's definitely takes reflection to, 
to realize that so yeah i think that's very very cool and i agree with ali i think everybody could relate to that in some way no yeah i remember and i remember being there where you know you're absolutely right like there's so much external pressure where people think what are you crazy like you know why would you do that why would you leave like you know it's, you have, it's a great paying job and you know great company and things like that um but i every day it felt like somebody was chipping away at my soul of who i was as a person like because mm. it, and that's when you know it's time to go that's when you mm. know right i i gotta start making <laughs> some moves here because i feel like the worst thing that you can do is to betray yourself and who you are as a person and you, yeah. you know and it's it's that inner voice like that your, your instinct that's telling you, your gut that's telling you, this isn't right. And, and it's time to, it's time to make some, yeah, choices that are ultimately going to align to who you really are, what you really want to do. That's why it's so important to have a good, firm sense of who, what identity. I always say it's so important. You need to know who you are as a person because every day, whether it's directly or indirectly, you're going to be challenged on that. Um, you know, are you the right person for this? Do you think that you can do this job? You know, do you feel like you're the, this is really this thing that you should be doing? And you've got to know who you are, what you're about, what you're not into. So you can really stand firm and say, yeah, no, this isn't for me. And I'm going to walk away and find something where it ultimately is what I want to do. Because we only have one shot at this thing called life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And I think <laughs> you most definitely, you know, have experience in that being, you know, a woman in a high in a high power position in tech. Like, I feel like you must all the time have to be like, no, I do belong here. This is my job. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. And, um, mm. you know, I can imagine that you face challenges all the time. And, you know, and, and even to get that position, kind of fighting off all the other men and kind of going, no, this job is mine, like, step back. Right. You know, I think, and that's the thing, I, I no matter, and it could be men or women that are going to challenge you, right? Um, you might even challenge, you might be challenging yourself. Sometimes I tell people, you got to get out of your own head. You got to get out of your own way. Sometimes yeah. we're our, our own worst critics and our biggest obstacle, obstacle in some mm -hmm. ways. So I think that it's so important that absolutely you're right. Like you need to know who you are as a person because you, know, you are going to get challenged every single day. I think for me, and I think everybody, you go, you're always going to be going on this journey. And as most journeys, you're going to have certain rough patches. Or you're going to have um, an experience where it's going to test you or it's going to try you. You need to be so grateful for all of those experiences that do test you and do try you. When I look back on it, every difficult time, any time where I thought, oh man, that's a bit unfair, or, or you know what, that was really difficult, or man, that could have been easier. I do not look back on any, with any regret on all of those experiences because by going through that and getting that experience and having that journey, there is absolutely nobody that can challenge me in terms of I've earned my spot and my seat at a table. Mm -hmm. And that's how everybody needs to feel. When you're going through it, it's like, this mm. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, it's like, you know, it's, you know, sometimes like, oh, can this just end now? <laughs> They're like, when am I going to get there? It's like, you set a goal. Like every thing you're trying to teach. Let's go and move. Oh, it's so true. It's so, so true. So I guess. You, you know, in terms of whether or not you've earned something because you've gone through the trials. Mm -hmm. And I guess, mm. so when you left banking, did you, I know like you always had an interest in tech. Was it you knew straight away tech was what you were going to go towards? Did you, did you take some time to kind of figure that out or did it just well, kind of happen to come? No, I will never forget it. Because, you know, I was at that, you know, that job and, you know, every day it just felt like you're kind of getting pushed to, it's like, you know, you need to go, you know, this is not good. You know, you're not happy. Like, you know, and I feel like that's what life does to you. First, it's like a whisper then it's like, you know, a bit of a chat. Then, then, then you hear the screams <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I like 
that analogy. <laughs> Very accurate. <laughs> when, uh, I remember I went on holiday. For me, whenever I go on a holiday, it's like I get these moments of clarity. And I remember I went on this mm. holiday, and I came back from this holiday because, you know, I had time to think and everything. I got a new place. I dumped the guy I was seeing. I started wow. my, my letter of resignation. <laughs> I started, was, oh, my God. I was going to clean the house. <laughs> um, and so then that was just. Oh, you must have been really unhappy. You I, mean, been... <laughs> I mean, I remember, and I remember even two weeks before, like, you know, this really nice guy, and he sent flowers and everything. You come back and he's like, oh, this isn't going to work. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, this is the right thing for me to do. With, with, I knew that at that point I wanted to leave more sort of corporate um, type of a, a world where I felt like this world of technology, I wanted to go more in the world of, of, of tech where it was more what we call like emerging technologies where there was so much cool stuff that was going to be happening with, in terms of data analytics, in terms of sensor technology, in terms of robotics, in terms of just all of these different things that I necessarily wasn't going to get that exposure to within banking. And I knew that, you know, that was such a cool, exciting space. I was going to continue to grow and, and learn so much every day, but at the same time, I could leverage all of those years of, of corporate experience in order to apply to this new world that I really wanted to enter into. Um, mm. And so then, so then just started the search really, and then started working more in terms of startups and scale ups. And also at that point in time, you know, beyond just the day to day job, it's like, what do you want to do in life? So, you know, what sort of nonprofits did I want to get involved in? What sort of things that I wanted to do that aligned to just other parts of my personality and that I probably wasn't going to get to explore in a day-to-day -day of, a, of a job. So it, I had to say so you kind of find, I guess, your work-life kind of balance. I don't believe in yes. balance. Before. No. <laughs> I, I don't say, like, when people say balance, I don't think, I think balance is a myth. I feel like what I tell people, I'm like, I fiercely prioritize. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Fair enough. The reality is, is that especially in today's world, it's always going to be a bit off. You know, I'll be like, mom, I'm not, you're not going to hear from me for two weeks, but no news is good news. Send a text message. <laughs> and then, you know, in two weeks, we're going to have a proper chat and talk and sit down and everything. Friends, it's like, guys, you're not going to see me for a month. This last next month is going to be pretty intense and crazy. So no, I can't go to your lunch. No, I can't go to your birthday party. I love you. And if you're supporting me, you're going to get that. You're going to understand that. So it's about you have to fiercely prioritize. And I, and I, for me, it's like you were just unapologetically focused on what you have to do. Yeah, no, I can. I think, yeah, that's a very um, accurate way to to describe something it is it's it's prioritizing what you need in, in your moment in that life i guess other people may describe that as balance or as you're like no it's not balance it's you know putting forward what is important to you at that time and yeah i think that's great balance. i think you're right that you know it's it's that's the right thing you know but i i never think well, i prefer the way you're putting it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> trademark that <laughs> and i get you know one of the things that you you know that i kind of take from you is that you, uh, one of your goals is to promote or to encourage or inspire whatever, whatever way you want to put it um women getting into the tech industry and um you know being a voice and being you know a figure for people who you know think that they can't do it and kind of saying you know look at me you can do it if i can do it you can do it <laughs> you know, seriously, because well, that's one of the things I remember, you know, I remember going to these conferences and particularly tech conferences. There, there was always a discussion about there's not enough women in tech, there's not enough women in tech. I thought, well, yeah, I know that. Um, <laughs> and I always thought, you know, if, if I'm not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. So you got, so what can I do? What's, what's my bit that I can do? And that's when 
I thought of tech women today. Like, so the tech women today, I started that several years ago because one, I was tired of hearing this conversation about how there's not enough women in tech. Two, I thought, well, you know what? If we're going to get more women in technology, we really need to expand the definition of what that means to be a woman in tech. So no, you don't have to be a coder or, or a, a programmer or ha- majored in computer science or even have a STEM background. I have a political science background from the liberal arts university. Um, I- and as well, for anyone who's listening to this, so you think like tech, you think geeky. Cecilia is like this super glamorous, beautiful, like <laughs> if you saw what I saw at lunch, you would not think she worked in tech. She looked like a supermodel. Oh so, God. you know, and we were, it, it was completely different. Yeah, we do it all. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, we watch, me and Ali watch movies and you think tech, you think, you know, Silicon Valley, you think geeky. And you kind of put a whole spin in it where I was like, oh, I wish I got into tech. (laughs) Well, that's, you know, that's why it said to me, like, if you would have told me I would end up in tech, I would have told you absolutely crazy because all of us have those, you know, ideas in our head of, you know, you know, a guy in a hoodie, a really geeky guy, you know, drinking energy drinks and (laughs) (laughs) the backpack. The snake is, you know, not really my gig. Uh, So it's really expanding (laughs) the definition of what it means to be a woman in technology. You could work in art and have a career in digital. You can work in fashion. You can work in education. You can work in healthcare. You can work in the maritime industry. You could work in all of these different industries. And every single one of those industries, there's an element of technology that allows them to grow. And to, and to engage their clients in all of these different things. And so we're all really mm. leveraging tech every single day in our lives, within our jobs. So one, I wanted to, as you said, change that perception of what, what that looks like to be a woman in technology, change that perception of what's the skill set and what, what are your interests need to be and what's the background. And then when you start to do that and you start to have change that narrative, that's when you'll get more women wanting to join the tech industry. When we talk about all of the good that tech does for our lives, for businesses, for society, tech for good, I mean, people won't want to be a part of that. People want to join Mm -hmm. them. We explain all the different industries that you can work in and from a tech perspective, that's what's going to get people interested and people want to be engaged in a part of that world. So Mm -hmm. with tech women today, I really wanted to sort of flip the script and change the game and really make it just expand what it means to be a woman in technology. And then also, as I started to become an entrepreneur, I started to become more engaged with what other female entrepreneurs were non-technical. But at the same time, they needed to understand how to use technology in order to grow and scale their businesses. So... You know, they need to understand how to use tech in order to market their business, in order to reach out to clients in a more effective way, in order to develop better client relationships, you know, using technology. There's so many amazing tools and and different ways of doing that. And I really wanted to remove that fear of getting involved in tech or people thinking, oh, it's not for me or I don't know anything about tech. Yeah, you do. You're using a smartphone if you are using a laptop <laughs> i'm sorry you're you're a tech woman today <laughs> wow and what what do you like how do you get that message how do you use tech women for today to get that message across and mm-hmm. um, you know what does that involve you know a lot of it's getting content out there so what i love doing is talking with different people i love hearing people's stories i love stories i feel like that's how we really learn from one another and we see how we're more alike than we are different. So one of the things that we do is get content out there where people are telling their stories of how they got involved in tech, what they're doing in tech, who they are as individuals. Because once you start breaking down those barriers, you're like, oh, wow, like, you know, she's a lot like me. And, you Mm. know, so it becomes a possibility for you. It's like, 
when I saw somebody where I thought, wow, I want to emulate that. And mm-hmm. you see it, mm-hmm. you believe it. And when you see that and you believe it, then you can achieve it for yourself. So yeah, it feels a bit more it tangible. Feels like then. It's tangible. It's out there. You can visualize it. Mm-hmm. And that's part of, don't even get me started on vision boards and manifest because that is a huge <laughs> thing. Like, so once you have that, that image that then you can start to put the steps together for yourself in terms of how can I get there? So once we get great content out there in terms of, I love to pretend like I'm Oprah and <laughs> yes. women and getting them to tell their stories, um, share their challenges, like the, the authentic stories, you know, like totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a, a bit cool. kind of what we do, you know, a part of what we do in the podcast as well as like what I've really enjoyed is that we've gotten to speak to so many women like you in all different types of industries. And that's what's cool about the podcasting world. Like we wouldn't have had this when we were growing up exactly. and you kind of fell into mm. your job. And now an 18 year old can put a podcast on mm-hmm. and hear, you know, in our series, it's, I think at this stage we've interviewed what, like, seven different women maybe six different women of g- completely different industries and um, from tv production to tech to influencing yeah. and i just think that's so cool that someone you know an 18 year old girl could listen and be like "Ooh, that sounds interesting or "Ooh, that sounds interesting mm. where we never got that, that's what I love. so powerful like this and, and the technology that provides them because now you're able to level the playing field now it's not like you have to be in a certain neighborhood or go to a certain school or know certain people you have you can have, you have access to this type of content through social media channels through you know just a, a way where you're able to see it you have access to it that's quite powerful and you're absolutely right we didn't have this growing up <laughs> no I, I had my dad telling me what to do from that was it i was like dad what what career should i have and I, oh. So I ended up in yachting. (laughs) Like, wow, you're yachting. It's it's worked out well for you, though. (laughs) Yeah, 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 it was a good show. Dad dad always knows best. But uh, no, I do. I think it's super exciting for, um, you know, the younger generation now, like you said, evening out the playing field. It's it's like and understand what your options are. I think that's something that's also so uh, that's so powerful when you're able to create options for yourself and understand what your options are, because that's when you really start to recognize your power. And I think so many people don't recognize how powerful they are. I, I remember there was, uh, you know, so many times, so many stories where, you know, women have come to me and they've been unhappy in their jobs or, or their situation. And, and I asked them, I'm like, well, at what point did you let go of your power? Because there's so much that we can't control. There's a lot that we can control. And if we can understand what our options are for ourselves and start to put plans together around it so that we have multiple options available to us. So no matter what the situation is, you have multiple options lined up. So if you don't get that promotion that you wanted, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to put up with that. If you're not being treated well in a situation, that is your invitation to go and find something new that aligns to how you should be treated. Yeah, and I definitely. Think that's so important. Yeah. No, I yeah, absolutely. totally agree with Can you. Can you, could you enlighten us a little bit on the pressures of being a CEO and how you manage it personally? I think just in general, um, it's not so much, it's not so much the role of maybe being a you know a co-founder and a, and a CEO, it's more about. I think it's more about it's more about the pressure I think that you put on yourself and how you how you choose to mm-hmm. handle that. This, there, no matter what situation, no matter what job, there's always going to be pressure. I think what I look to what I do is you know there's always going to be tough times. Everything, but what I say to myself is, okay, I want to handle this in the right way. Because I recognize the fact that I'm responsible for a team. I recognize the fact that, you know, you're really, you know, taking the lead on things. And you want to make sure that you're doing things in a way where it demonstrates integrity. 
where it demonstrates that you are showing that you're being responsible in your role. It shows that you are being a visionary, that you were brought on to do and to like really lead the ship, if you will. So it's more about it's more about how I handle the situation, no matter how much pressure mm-hmm. is put on me, because there's always going to be pressure. And you know, mm-hmm. how I with anything, no matter what my roles have been over the years, you have to really take time for yourself. You do have to be a bit selfish. Some people aren't selfish enough. You've got to, there's <laughs> self-care needs to happen because you can't pour from an yeah. empty cup. Yeah. And especially when you are in a position of leadership, that's a responsibility. So you need to make sure that you're doing the right things for yourself so that you're going to be able to give your best to your team. You're going to be able to give your best to your family. You're going to be able to give your best to yourself. So I think those things are, are really important for anybody in any role um, because you're always going to have pressure. You're always going to have difficult and challenging times, but it, it's how you handle it. And, and as long for me, as long as I'm doing something in a way where there's integrity, there's transparency, and there's responsibility, I, mean, I feel like I'm that, that's my North Star. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think being able to kind of go to bed at night and and feel good about the decisions you've made is uh yeah it, it's a lot and like you said for any industry you know i always know with myself i'm like if i make a decision knowing i won't go to bed and i'm happy with it no matter how controversial it is or how much it's gonna upset other people and um, that usually takes off a lot of pressure off of me because i'm like it's done I've done this. It's done. I've made the decision. It's... And you've got, and that's what, and that's what leadership is, right? It's like you know, it's it's not about you know, people pleasing and mm-hmm. making everybody yeah. happy. It's doing the right thing in a way where, from an integrity perspective, you know you can put your head down at night and you've done the right thing. That's key. Yeah. That should be your north yeah. 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 No, I totally agree Absolutely. with that. Um, well, we're running out of time, but I guess lastly, you <laughs> were recently featured on British Vogue. So congratulations. I read the piece yesterday. Um, very, very cool. I feel like as a as a woman, I don't know, I feel like you kind of made it if you make British Vogue or well, any Vogue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's kind of the whole... The whole uh, Oh. kind of basis of the magazine is kind of be like you know kind of like what we're talking about here today like this could be you you know this you know kind of mm. the 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 way the vogue magazine has kind of um, transpired right. so yeah congratulations very yeah. cool so yeah that was such a an, an honor because it's like what you said when i that opportunity it's like when i had that opportunity to have that that school trip and i saw a woman another woman in a position who was in a role where I thought, I thought, wow, this would be a possibility for me also. So to have that opportunity where, you know, perhaps another, you know, young girl out there could see that and think, wow, like she's gone through similar challenges that, that I've gone through or what I probably will go through. And for somebody to think, you know, that could be a possibility for me. I just got to keep going. I just got to, you know, make it happen. Um, that was just incredible. So, so yeah, I think that, you know, and, and for to be in a, a publication um, such as that, I mean, ooh, amazing. So, but I think yeah. it's incredible see, to yeah. them provide that sort of a, a platform, mm-hmm. um, you know, for a little girl, a little black girl from New York, like, you know, that <laughs> that was working and wanted to work in tech. So, you know, such an honor. And I'm so grateful. Yeah, no, it's a huge recognition. It's very... Now That's I'm it. like, every time we walk away from this podcast, I feel like me and Ali are like, oh, this could be us. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I'm going to be an inspiration. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be on Vogue. <laughs> so oh, my gosh. No, I think, but I think platforms like this are so important because this is the type of content that we need to be getting out there. You know, I think it's so Mm. important. I think this is what people need to see right now and to be inspired and to, to understand what the possibilities are for them and, and to really understand what their options are and just to move forward. 
Yeah, no, I mm. totally agree. Hopefully someone will listen to this and yeah, you'll have inspired them to, you know, to make the world a better place, whether it be through tech or, you know, whatever avenue they choose. Yeah. And yeah, you get told all your life you can be whatever you want to be, but, you know, just to actually see the the tangible force behind it and be like, oh, actually, they're not just spinning a line. It is actually physically possible. Uh, no, it's very, mm. very cool. Um, yeah, I think that we've wrap it up. Ali, is there anything else you'd like to add or Cecilia? Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much because this has been massively inspirational and we've had this really cool women's empowerment series going on and um, having someone from your industry is like Daisy said, I, it's not, it's not someone I come across every day. Um, so it's been, it's been really cool to have you on. So we really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks guys. No, thanks for the opportunity. I just, I had an amazing time. You know, I think what you guys are doing is fantastic. Keep going. <laughs> oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And I can't wait for our next lunch in London. I, no. I'll, I'll be, I won't be booking anything the next day. So That's then we can go on and keep diary. partying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks again, Cecilia, and yeah, we'll catch up soon. Catch up soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.